Alas, this Faulkner book is but the sum of misfortunes. My dear reader, fasten your hat as we embark on a literary disappointment tour with William Faulkner's masterpiece, The Sound and the Fury. Spoiler alert, this is no masterpiece. Let's start with the structure, shall we? Faulkner divides the novel into four parts, each told by a different narrator. It's as if he couldn't decide on a protagonist, so he just threw them all at us, like a flock of greedy seagulls fighting over a moldy piece of bread. The shifting perspectives are like playing musical chairs drunk, disorienting, dizzying, and ultimately unsatisfying. Speaking of unsatisfying, let's talk about Faulkner's prose style. To put it kindly, it's as if he ate a dictionary and then vomited it onto the page. The sentences are long, convoluted, and full of obscure vocabulary that leaves even the most erudite reader scratching their head. It's as if Faulkner is trying to bamboozle the audience with words even he doesn't understand. Well, let's admit it, you got us there. Now onto the characters. Oh boy, where do I start? They are as likable as the Black Plague. The Compsons are dysfunctional, but that doesn't mean they have to be devoid of any redeeming qualities. Instead, they are a bunch of whiny, self-serving brats who care more about their own pitiable fates than actually doing something to change them. They make Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh look like the life of the party. Let's not forget Faulkner's views on race and gender. His portrayals of women are either virgins or whores with nothing in between. I guess he missed the memo that females are complex, multifaceted creatures. As for his depictions of the black characters, well, let's just say they are not exactly enlightened. They are either subservient or violent, which is like saying all dogs are either poodles or attack dogs. It's no wonder today's America has seen the rise of Black Lives Matter with such lazy, offensive writing. I needn't say more. The Sound and the Fury is a pretentious, muddled mess of a novel that tries to be profound, but ends up as shallow as a household toilet. Faulkner's prose style is unnecessarily complex, his characters are as appealing as dental surgery, and his views on race and gender are as enlightened as a medieval dungeon. I wouldn't recommend this book to my worst enemy unless they were looking for a cure for insomnia.